closer at sound barrier. They're coming in again. I mean, Note got his mech back just in time. And now Jinbu on the Doomfist, another one of his signature heroes, goes in. Nice hit on the closer. That's a rocket punch. You wanted an uppercut to AKM. Jinbu, if you weren't on the Moo crew now, you will be after this round. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Gets Unko. That's point B. But this is the Outlaws' day. Overtime just barely activated as the Shock have one last scrambling chance to keep themselves alive in this series. Super not going to last too long. Violet down as well. It's all falling apart. Had to end sometime. The win streak is over. The Houston Outlaws defeat the San Francisco Shock. Well, hello, fellow Overwatch fans. Welcome to Esports in 30. I'm AJ Fry, back from E3, a little exhausted, a little out of my mind. We're going to have some fun talking all things Overwatch League. To my left here, the always dependable Ron, Run and Thera Lee. Did you miss me, Ron, and my butchering of your name? I, I figured did. It out. I did. You know, for as much crap as I give you on this desk, I was really, really worried you'd find an esport you liked more at E3 and wouldn't come back here. So they I'm don't glad really have esports at E3. It's not mostly yet. just like, here's our new game, here's our not new system. Yet. For Honor, uh, yeah. Ghostwire. We don't know much about a lot of those titles, but we're not here to talk about those today, are no, we? No, it's Overwatch, and it that's is. what we got for you. No sick burn before we go? No, I think we're going to stay nice. I'm glad you're back and you're not sick. Oh, well, thank you. That's, that's so kind. I'll save it for the end. All right. Well, I, <laughs> I don't know how to pivot now. Ron is being nice to me. Um, here's some stage three highlights. Didn't seem like they knew closer at Sound Barrier. They're coming in again. I mean, Note got his mech back just in time. And now Jinbu on the Doomfist, another one of his signature heroes, goes in. Nice hit on the closer. That's a rocket punch. You wanted an uppercut to AKM. Jinbu, if you weren't on the Moo crew now, you will be after this round. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Gets Unko. That's point B. He's located land space down, and she would just kind of like it. Oh, what a oh, leap wow. Jinbu. Whoa, they cannot keep alive after that. Unko. Oh, he's not gonna be able to do it, does he get No, he does survive just the final. He jumps on such short cooldown, no worries there. Mono, will he get the deny? Oh, buddy! <laughs> Stylish play. So Spark oh, getting so aggressive so here. Good. Can they get the kills out of it though? Grab gets used by Corey as well. Sans himself to the Beautiful against Moody. Amazing boot comes in. Papa has the barrage and he goes for oh, it. And triple kill instantly, make it five, really. No supports here. War to Wands are defiant. Charge coming up from Young Pope. Will be able to take down the Dose. He turns around. He gets a shatter. Welcome Young back. Young Pope. Oh, man. Welcome back indeed. Might have just single handedly turned that one around, and he has. Or can he do with a big biotic? Sound barrier here. He's going to go a long way for the Philly Fusion with Poco. Oh, buzzing. Oh, he drops it. Fuck three. So now he's going to be vulnerable. Sound barrier has gone down here for Paris, but still, they remove Han off of the mix. If they can get a follow up here. So much damage getting cranked out on the Paris, but the Blizzard may make all the difference. An enormous Blizzard at the end. Also helps you build up back towards your shadows. So here's gonna be the rally. It's gonna be Strab that comes down right away. No follow-ups on the good Brutus. It's bizarre. He's a shot and force more open to down. I mean, the shock in that these are transcendence with now a graph. That's a huge oh, win for them. Is. Now a sound barrel from the Salt Dynasty. They're trying to get aggressive behind the support of. It doesn't look good. And the fire strike comes through from Super. Then he just puts the shield up. It's another day in the office. Oh. Not willing to come. Like, what are you doing? Oh, just yet. Not at all. I mean, it's now the opposite. It's three to one in terms of tilts right now for the Washington Justice. They are the ones who are locking it down. And Sleepy's on a tear. Finally, somebody removes this guy, but the Justice. Farface coming in. Left there it is. Up. There it is. Nanoblade. So they only get plus eight fusions, and Kellex is still able to get an immortality field out there, but there's plenty of Dragon Blade left to go around in the shock. But this is the Outlaws' day. Overtime just barely activated as the shock have one last scrambling chance to keep themselves alive in this series. Super not going to last too long. Violet down as well. It's all falling apart. Had to end sometime. The win streak is over. The Houston Outlaws defeat the San Francisco Shock. Well, week two is in the books, and it had some surprising results. I mean, San Francisco losing their first uh, series in stage one to the Outlaws, no less. Yeah, but before we people. 
get into all the exciting matches, let's talk broad strokes here for a second, Ron. Sure. What is the theme that we are seeing uh, presented here in the first couple of weeks of this exciting Stage 3? I think Stage 3, given that you know this is do or die time for a lot of these teams if yeah. they want to make it to the season playoffs, the big theme is reinvention, you know, self-discovery, rediscovery, so well, to speak. We have seen a lot of teams like shaking up their lineups. Obviously. Yeah, their lineups. Uh, Toronto is one of those teams now going yeah. like mixed roster there. But what do you mean? Is it just like roster mix-up? Is it like team composition focus changes? Is it reconsidering, I don't know, attack? Uh, patterns. So a lot of a lot of Koreans. What does that mean? A lot of the Korean teams talk about something called team color, which might be kind of a foreign term if you're not in the know. Team but color or team color? Color, color. Color. Okay. So what that means is kind of like um, you know every team has their identity that they would like to stick to, regardless of um, what roster they have. They have a style that they really want to cater to. Okay. Even if you're playing the same composition across teams, we see more aggressive goats. We've seen more defensive goats, more reactive goats. Right. We've seen somber goats. We've seen um, DPS play. So it's not so much strictly the composition, but how you want to cater uh, your style and kind of your tendencies to match your composition. Mm. So um, a big theme this week, obviously talking about Houston Outlaws, is we've seen, like, for example, they were super, super lost after coming out of season one. Coming into season two with all these new teams and stuff and a brand new meta, not being able to rely on Jake and stuff on DPS to shot call, you had them kind of lost in the sauce for a while. And right. I think this weekend, uh, or maybe even last weekend, they were able to look at themselves in the mirror and kind of wipe away the glass and realize, you know, this is who I really am. A DPS team. Yeah, ultimately. a DPS. It turns out, like Monte Cristo said. Well, I was going to go there next. I mean, there was this big battle online. Monte Cristo, Monte Cristo I should say, uh, directing his, uh, well... <clears throat> Not anger, but uh, yeah, his he, sentiments, I should say, sure. at Flame uh, and, and saying like, see, I told you so, I've been saying you guys should just run the DPS, do what you're good at, and ultimately it paid off taking down, well, the winners of Stage 2, the second ranked team in the league, uh, the San Francisco Shock. Is this something that we're going to see more of, or are they just going to stick to DPS now? I think um, it's good to look at this like... Um, you know, now we know that last week the Houston Outlaws didn't win or have a near victory, I should say, uh, against NYXL, right? They went to, uh, all the way down to the wire, yeah. and people were like, oh, this was a one-off, but actually toppling San Francisco Shock, who arguably, I know they're second in standings, like you said, yeah. is maybe the best team. Well, they did defeat the Titans ultimately to yeah, win stage, stage two. two. So, so uh, we can't just shrug this off anymore. We have to say that Houston are doing something right. And it turns out the thing that they changed are they're doing two big things. They're implementing more Sombra into the play, like a lot of teams are, and they are letting their DPS players play DPS. We've seen them play a lot of Farah. we've seen them play Doomfist. Actually, uh, Lynx are playing Doomfist is not a hero he's ever played. He said straight up, I've never played Doomfist, and this whole thing kind of sprouted out from them in a scrim yeah. uh, on Eichenwald, where they're like, oh, we're just being crushed, and they've had this collective moment where they're like, you know what, as much as we, we don't like to say Monty is right, he often is, and um, for us to compete, we, we are just, there's so much we don't know and so many teams are so drilled on this. We have to hit them with a curveball and, and I think that's what they should have done from the, from the beginning. They could have done this three weeks ago, um, but they're only starting to realize it now and they're running out of time. Mm. Well, let's go back to, to Monte Cristo for a second. Am I saying, I'm saying calling Monte Cristo. Him, yeah, tis, Christo. Christo. Guys, E3 was a lot. <laughs> the words aren't formulated right in the old weekend. noggin up here. M Monte Cristo, of course, I'm still saying it wrong. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but should casters be making these kind of comments, at least in this? I mean, there's obviously the stuff that's going to come offhand when you're doing this, ad-libbing yes. your, as your thoughts are coming to you. Right. But it seems like he was more pointed about this whole idea, especially mm -hmm. with regards to the outlaws. And should they be this invested? Should they be engaging the coaches mm -hmm. in this respect? You are a coach yourself. Yeah, I mean, I think this, this rapport on, on social media is good to build a fan base, both yeah. for um, the team and for the casters, as long as it's healthy and um, you know it's all in good fun. But I do think um, that both Flame and Monte Cristo have gotten a little bit more uh, personal than a lot of fans would like. Right. I think Monte Cristo, um, in general, is kind of a polarizing figure. Uh, you know, he's he's very prideful. I think I can say that. You know, he, he <laughs> takes pride in in um, kind of spewing the truth and being. Uh, brutally honest if he has to be yeah. even if it comes to the expense of you know a certain team's reputation because he, he sees it like oh they're, they're pro teams 
right? Their their point, uh, their jobs are to succeed and to to play and to win. Mm. If you aren't doing that, we have all the right to criticize you. Mm. To which Flame is saying, well, that's not really good for a fan to do. You know, if you really want to support us, you should uh, kind of spread positivity and stuff. But, but can Monte Cristo be so like focused on one team? Like he's, he's his he's job is to be analysis. Pretty objective, I think. For all, everyone, right? Yeah. yeah, I mean, he he slandered teams all over um, social media prior in his careers and like League of Legends and stuff. So he's no stranger to kind of um, being put in the flames, so to speak, and right. kind of fanning them one way or another. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I like it personally. I think if you're the general manager of a losing team, uh, much less professional is going onto a stream and like losing your mind for an hour and a half over something mm -hmm. a caster says. It's your job to take care of your players and yeah. know what's best for them. If comments of one yeah. particular person really get to you that much, you should yeah. reevaluate. So, uh, Bishop, just let it go, man. This beef between us, uh, <laughs> just move on, Bishop. It's just, it was just one drink. It was just really was. It's not a big deal. Uh, let's talk about the, the shock very briefly now coming off this loss to the Houston Outlaws. Yeah. Uh, how is that going to be affecting them? I mean, they, they're coming into this stage so strong, the winners yeah. of the last stage. Are they reconsidering how they approach practicing moving forward? It seems like they have perfected goats, obviously, but now... They're perfect goats. The perfect goats. Yeah. But now they're finding, oh, we're, we're weak to this uh, approach with the mm -hmm. Farah and Doomfist in there. So, like, are they going to be reconsidering their play style or are they going to stick to what they know going up against all other teams? I think that's an amazing question because, uh, so, we're going to talk about the World Cup a little later, but yeah. uh, San Francisco Shock head coach Krusty, um, he, you know, I've worked with him briefly. He's a uh, big brain. He's, he's really, really smart, really, really diligent. And um, I don't think they are particularly weak to DPS, at least they won't be for long with him at the helm. Mm -hmm. I do think this was kind of a one-off thing and I trust them to uh, rectify their plans to accommodate for the possibility. Yeah. Um, I think especially after how vocal Houston Outlaws were, you know, flamed their general manager talking about, oh, we don't, we're not gonna play DPS. If you wanna win at GOATS, GOATS is the best comp, you have to perfect GOATS. Mm -hmm. uh, they might have been assuming after the month break that they're probably just gonna follow that philosophy. Um, it might have been a bait and switch for Houston even, like if you're gonna dig into a conspiracy theory, right? right? Uh, and it worked out for them. But I certainly don't think this signals anything too worrying for San Fran. Well, I mean, they did ultimately crush Seoul. Like, a few yeah, days later, a few days right? later, so. they're like, oh, it was a one-off. You know, we yeah. we were complacent. We just gotta struggle it off. We we have to stay hungry, and well, they will. Uh, Vancouver staying strong. Their only loss so far that final match in uh, the stage two playoffs. Yeah, and they are the first team to uh, reach a plus fifty map differential of this season. Yeah, yeah even faster than NYXL did right. uh, last season. Are they still the best in the league? I mean, I said it. Are they really, really? Of course they are, of yeah. course they are. I mean, that's just a joke. Titans are so good, they're incredible. I mean, if you had any doubts for a moment, looking at a plus 50 map differential, like only in stage three, is absolutely incredible. It, it really tells a story of how dominant they were season-wide. They would season -wide. start losing at a rapid pace. They have to, to lose, like, constantly to number one seeding for the season yeah, playoffs. Yeah, the they end. have a mile's worth of, of leeway here to yeah. prepare. And even if they drop some maps, um, you know, let's say they wanted to prepare for perhaps an incoming DPS meta or something, yeah. they had total room to kind of goof off a little bit and experiment even. Right. Like they're, they Do you are think so we'll actually ahead. see them doing that or are they just going to keep playing to, you know, maintain that perfect season record? I wouldn't put it past them. I mean, Runaway, uh, when they were still a team competing in uh, Contenders Korea, yeah. they played a ton of DPS and their DPS play was stellar. So even though they're so dominant in GOATS now, uh, if they were to switch to a DPS meta, I actually think they'd be one of the least teams uh, affected by a big change like that. Mm. Well, let's talk uh, Gladiators then, another team that is sitting at the top, but not top quite in the top. They're, right. they're consistently good against the weaker teams and consistently bad against the top teams. Yeah. Is there anything that these guys can do in order to switch that around and actually start you know, being a threat to the Shock and Titans in NYXL? Yeah, it's a, it, that's kind of difficult, right? Because on, on one hand, they do kind of seem to have a winning formula. They are probably the most consistent team in the league. Their players across the board are super, super consistent in Surefor and Decay and Void and Big Goose. All of them are super, super good at their jobs and are in contention for a top five in their roles. Right. But um, it's that's, that's just about it, right? They, none of them really have the oomph or kind of the, the special sauce to push through and break top three. 
Um, it's kind of sad because I like the gladiators, right? But yeah. they're almost boring to play or to watch play. I mean, because all the results are so predictable. Right. They they will play a team underneath them in standings and win, or they'll play a team above them in standings and lose. And it's just very rarely that gladiators upset anything. Right. Yeah. Mm. Well, so what do you do? Do you want to like change your players and change this magic formula you have and? You know, get some new blood in to push for top three, but potentially ruin all the synergy you've built to beat consistently the, the weaker teams. That's a question for Dipe that he's, uh, you know, their head coach that he's even entertained on social media. He's he's created a tweet longer talking about, listen, we know that we've made st stage playoffs a ton. We've never made it all the way through. Right. Um, so there's something missing, and it's something special that we don't have, but we're looking into it. Mm, maybe they'll start like merchandising for. The gladiators that is a secret or special sauce. Oh, I, I like that. You should pitch Gladiator that. sauce. Yeah, and I'd buy the it. Sales of that, I don't know. Make you consistently different. good, but never hit GM. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> Toronto, we'll touch on them very briefly. Finally playing at the level that everyone expected these guys to play oh, don't at. Say uh, well, don't say that. Well, look, when they were announced, no one was expecting it great hurts. things from Toronto. And then they won their first match, and they played quite well in yeah. stage one, Got made the, the playoffs. playoffs yeah. And then it's just been... A steady trickle yeah. downhill ever since. Yeah, starting off with that core roster, um, we had, you know, before people like Asher and such retired, before they yeah. picked up M37, the yeah. uh, speedrunner galore, right? Yeah. Um, we were optimistic. We saw them 5 2 in stage one, and everyone's really excited, like, oh, it's another full Korean team. We shouldn't have doubted them. Yeah. We started losing some Korean members due to burnout, picked up some other people going mixed of all things, and um, yeah, it looks like we've gone a few steps backward mm. because just in terms of preparation and stuff and have to do a lot of recuperating uh, and and as much as it pains me to say this as as someone born and raised in Toronto I don't think it's likely whatsoever that we're gonna be a part of uh, this stage playoff no and maybe not even season playoffs well don't say that point. there's a chance still they could maybe make top maybe. 12 what about Boston are we gonna see these guys in those final 12 at the end of the season they're like again middle of the pack team yeah. Not doing so hot, lost to Houston, almost defeated Philadelphia, but yeah. ultimately didn't. What's hurting these guys? Uh, I think, uh, again, an identity crisis. Boston yeah. traded Note to Dallas Fuel. Their D.Va one trick, well, Note is not a one trick, he's actually very flexible, but mm. D.Va's his best character and he's playing D.Va for like 99% of his total time with Boston. Um, to pick up RCK, who is an amazing diva, but also can sprinkle in a, a hint of Sombra and such. Yeah. Uh, you know, that makes sense, and a lot of people assume that they'd be playing a better Sombra Goats-oriented style to kind of force these mistakes and really get away with a more aggressive tendency. Mm. And we saw glimpses of that when they first picked him up, but now um, Dallas Field with No actually puts him on Sombra, and they've been having arguably more success or about the same amount of success as Boston uh, after the trade. So Note wasn't the problem, evidently. Mm. It seems to me like the team overall at like a you know top-wide structural managerial level yeah. doesn't know exactly what they want to do with the team. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's talk about a team where there's one player, and I hate doing this. I don't like calling out one player, but do I've it. seen the clips, and it's Yanu for the Washington yeah, Justice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He is just not paying off in a big way, making no. mistakes that I would feel embarrassed about making, yeah. and yeah. I'm a platinum level player. So. Yikes. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about Giannis and, and Washington Justice. Um, when, when Washington Justice first came around, people knew that, uh, okay, looking at this roster, we don't have a lot of big names, and yeah. you know, there have been rumors going around with low budgets and kind of uh, mismanagement even. Well, wasn't Wizards' whole thing like, oh, we're going to moneyball this team exactly. and use the low that budget players. And... Right, right, right. That, you know, it doesn't matter what budget you throw at me. I am I am your typical genius. I can make this happen no matter what players you throw at me because, you know, I have the data, I have the strats, I got the secret formula. Right. Um, and it seems no, like Wizards a bit of a sham because his players are doing things that, again, platinum players might not even do. Missing yeah. classic jumps, you know, dropping your shields at the wrong time, just yeah. being totally off in nowhere's land by, by yourself. Um, and when you ask me, you know, what's, what's going wrong with Washington Justice? The answer is everything. Mm. The answer is absolutely everything because it, from, you know, a managerial level, they look like they're a mess. From a player standpoint, you know, the, these guys aren't as talented as, as a lot of superstars in the league. And you look at their trajectory and it doesn't look like they've done anything to salvage that, right? Mm -hmm. No new coaches, no massive superstar players coming into that lineup, no new strategies even. They're content to play GOATs poorly with poor players and poor management. And these guys, 
there might be only one team as bad as they are right now, and that might be Florida Mayhem. And you don't ever want to be compared to the standings with Florida Mayhem. No, yeah, you want to avoid that uh, comparison at all costs. Now let's talk about some teams that uh, you know are moving up. Obviously, we've already touched on Dallas, but Chengdu versus Dallas. Chengdu, such a fun team oh, yeah, to yeah. watch. I think we're both big fans of theirs just for the yeah. enjoyment of watching their games. Are these guys uh, potentially contenders for reaching uh, you know end of season playoffs? Uh, I think they'll definitely get some sort of superlative or most creative or most fun team to watch. Yes, right. Uh, they whipped out the Ash this weekend, and we haven't. Seen Ash at all in the Overwatch League, pretty much. She's yeah. she's just pretty much, uh, you know, if you need a hit scan, you pick Widow for long range. You need consistent DPS, you pick McCree yeah. or Soldier or CC for McCree, even. Um, but it's Ash. cool to hear the crowd chanting Bob, Bob, Bob. Yeah, it's the first we've ever heard of that. It's yeah. really fun. Um, and getting this 3 1 win over Dallas Fuel is. Is, must feel good for them, um, mm. especially after their rough last week. Yeah. Uh, but to say that, do we see this, this team going to playoffs? Sure, doable. Um, do I think they'll succeed in playoffs? N no, especially no. now that they've been kind of figured out. These used to be harder to scout playing DPS, but now other people are playing DPS. Um, Ash is kind of weird, but not all that good, and I don't think suddenly having an Ash player on your team will make that big of a difference. Yeah. Um, really, they're starting to do get you think we'll outscaled. see Blizzard do anything with Ash to make her more viable and competitive, given how underplayed she is? I mean, yeah. obviously there are characters like Symmetra that barely get touched. But they have a niche. Yeah. Right. Ash, is, Ash doesn't really seem to have that niche. Yeah. Um, again, she fulfills I the hit scan I see her played role. a lot in, the, in, you know, Platinum League yeah. games. Because she's fun. Yeah. But, but when you're out here trying to win, you have certain things you need your characters to do. Yeah. Um, and she doesn't have, a, I think, a clear-cut goal um, that she wants to accomplish, right? She wants to deal TPS, and she kind of has um, elements to, to deal with large groups, you know, with mm -hmm. her Dynamite and maybe even Bob. Mm -hmm. But... Against goats, these tools aren't strong enough to destroy their group. You really mm. need to compound it with um, other things to make her successful. Yeah. And when you're combining several DPS together, there's just no no room in like a triple or quad setup for a DPS with kind of lame mobility. She's not really fast. She doesn't have a wall climb, and that's like shotgun blast back. It's it's a long cooldown. It doesn't send you very far. Right. So. I would like to see maybe up her damage a bit and maybe say like, okay, well, she has dynamite and this big butler thing. Yeah. It's upper damage to make her more appealing in terms of raw DPS perhaps, right. or upper elements of dealing with crowds. Then maybe we'll see her getting some play. Yeah, in, in some niche scenarios for sure. Well, Sombra has been getting a whole lot more play. Uh, percentages yes. uh, uh, going uh, way up there from 24.8% uh, to 30.7%. Uh, why is Sombra getting so much play? I mean, she isn't a <laughs> character who like does all that much damage, but I guess right. it's her abilities that just make her so deadly. Yeah, I mean... I'm sure you've been in solo queue for, you know, playing yes. in your Platinum games and you've had a Sombra sneak up behind you and, uh, you know, her gun isn't much to write home about, but when no. she isolates you and you can't hit any of your other buttons, yeah. suddenly that's quite a tall task to handle. It is. Right. And imagine, you know, you're playing GOATS where none of these players or none of these characters, I should say, rather, have a lot of long-range damage to kind of scout the field and deter her. Yeah. You have D.Va that could constantly shoot and kind of spy check, but good Sombras will be able to weave their way around and find mm -hmm. themselves to you. Once D.Va's hacked, she's just a massive ball battery, right? Yeah. Um, and once the D.Va's out the way or hacked, that's a free grab. Um, a big thing in, this, in, in GOATS is trying to eat the enemy grab, denying that big power play, and then pushing that momentum back through and winning and stabilizing on a point. Mm -hmm. uh, Sombra completely denies the enemy's ability to do that. So if you're looking for a more aggressive style, yeah. and you know you're not as, your, your diva's not as good as eating grabs, because that's honestly really, really, really hard to do consistently. Mechanically, it's very challenging. Yeah, it's yeah. also really mentally intensive. You have to predict yeah. when you're gonna use DM, and, and can someone else block it with, with bubbles or something, right? right? It's much easier to hide someone away, hack at them, um, build your EMP and just hit uh, the big uh, R button, or Q button, sorry. Right. But playing a little bit of other games here and there. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I, I can see why some people say it's dishonest. It's kind of like you're not fighting man to man, as Super says. But if you're not as good as Titans or Shock at their own game, I don't see why you wouldn't play the Sombra right now. Yeah. She's incredibly strong, and uh, you, you need all the advantages you can get when you're trying to get that playoff spot. Mm -hmm. Use all the utilities available in order to win, I say. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about a winner this week. It's time for our MVP of the second week of this third stage of Overwatch League. 
Who have you decided on, Renanthera? So I think we'd be mistaken to pick anyone else but Linkster this week, and that's because Houston Outlaws has had their big return to glory. You know, mm. uh, Houston Outlaws fans are probably one of the most, if not the most, dedicated fans in all of the league. After Houston Outlaws, uh, after all, they have this curse of always making it all the way to the end of the distance, fifth game, and then just kind of diving down to the bottom. They finally overcame that curse this weekend doing DPS play, so the fans were on their side, the, the team very visibly looked relieved to kind of see this work out. Yeah. And Linkster, uh, the reason why he's our, our MVP is because he whipped out Doomfist, you know, he's uh, praised pretty much worldwide for his amazing Widow. But he's never played Doomfist before. He took that shot out and showed not only is he proficient at hitscan, he can potentially play projectile heroes and flankers right. and stuff to a high level as well. And that just opens up a huge playbook for Houston. If they keep Linkster on the roster and they really refine him, he's probably top three DPS in all of the league. Wow. Yeah, I, I really do believe that. He has a Widowmaker to rival Saya player on Florida Mayhem, who's the best Widow, and Doomfist, like that game against Shock of all people, it's not easy to pull that off against Goats. He can very easily be bubbled or bashed off, right. and he played amazing on his first game. I think he has a ton of potential. Well, that's a great pick, and just hearing that, though, that you got the best Widow player in the league on the worst team in the league, that's gonna Ooh. be a tough position to be in. Yeah, rest uh, in peace, Saya player. <laughs> we got a few more topics to touch on before we wrap things up out there. Uh, for starters, Ron, what's the deal with Revival? Tell oh, me Revival. more about your new project oh, here. It's very God. cool. So I guess it's time to plug our team a little bit, yeah. our team, my team. Uh, I'm the general manager of a new contenders team called Revival. And Revival, for those that don't know, is composed of the core from the Mayhem Academy that was recently disbanded. Right. So um, we have... One of the top teams in contenders. Yes, I mean, without a doubt, we, we definitely hope so. Yesterday we played our first match against yeah. Second Win. And for those that do know their contenders history, uh, Second Win was the only team that beat Mayhem Academy last year. Mayhem Academy famously breaking Fusion University's like 31 match record or something ridiculous. Mm. And now that Fusion University is out and playing in Korea, and NA's kind of uh, left the crown up for grabs, we're looking to snatch that crown, right? We're looking to win and take it all. And on our roster, we have uh, a lot of Overwatch League retirees and contenders veterans. We have Apply from the Florida Mayhem. We have Mongachu who's been on the show. We got Paintbrush who's been on the show. Um, rounding our support line, we have Epps to accompany him. And in our tech positions, we have iRemix, who was previously on the LA Gladiators. And we have Manitan, who is also a star uh, on the Florida Mayhem. So we have a stacked roster. Yeah, sounds uh, great. We have you know, a winning formula with me at the helm, with our, our <laughs> other coaches and owner. All right, Ron. Yeah, reprise. We Sounds got good. Shot. We got the move. On we're gonna here. win. They're ama <laughs> we're amazing. Keep watching us. Let's talk about replays being added uh, into Overwatch now. Obviously, yeah, this is something that people are doing uh, with third-party apps, but it's great that we actually have them in game available yeah. now so that you can when you have that game oh i just made that amazing play i wasn't running my nvidia shadow capture whatever that software is shadow play shadow i guess play. is the nvidia yeah. thing yeah yeah so now uh, can you send the replay files to other people or are you where or do so, you just export it or what how i understand it is when you play a game you it'll automatically record your last 10 games played Right, like um, your uh, plays of the game. Yeah, like your highlights or your play yeah. of the game. And, you know, obviously when a new patch comes, if you don't have it saved to your computer or export it away, you'll lose it forever. So make sure you play your game, you record it, uh, then you save it, and then you mm -hmm. have it, you can upload it to YouTube. People can very easily, you know, watch it, they can enjoy it, they can get a good laugh, or you can send it to a coach like me who will charge you uh, to give feedback, but I need the money please and thank you, times are hard. Um, but yeah, you can, you can get better, you can end up in a higher rank than AJ, uh -huh. you know, so we're out of platinum. That's I'm not really excited. that difficult to task, ultimately. <laughs> just for me, You're the top apparently. 50 percentile, I Great. think. Great, you're slightly better average. than half, great. <laughs> uh, let's uh, wrap things up with World Cup talk. Uh, the national committees have revealed the seating for this year's World Cup, and no surprise, South Korea's number one. What a surprise. But Canada's number two. Yes. Why is that? What do you mean, why is that? We're good. Are we? Yeah, we're good at basketball. Yeah, well that's... We're good at Overwatch too. <laughs> were there Canadians on the Raptors though? Uh, let's not talk about that. <laughs> Anyways, okay, so Canada has a good good showing, you know, we've, yeah. we've got the third place medal, or we got the second place medal in the 2017 World Cup, and then we got the third place medal in the 2018 World Actually, Cup. Actually, yeah, we're Actually, doing pretty well. Yeah, so, I mean, uh, yeah, we, we're consistently up there, just right below Korea, and I think we deserve the second seed. But I think we should shout out the other teams as well that are yes. uh, having their committees because there's a lot of controversy about uh, who they are. Uh, well, we got uh, China, France, U.S., U.K., Australia, Sweden, 
Russia and Finland. Yeah, a bunch of good teams, a bunch of awesome countries that deserve to have this representation. And I think it's pretty mixed between European, yeah. Asians, and North Americans. But you know what we got to do now? What? Wrap up the show. We got to wrap up the show. But, okay. but, 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 you were at E3 the other day. I was. And I wasn't here to celebrate your birthday yesterday. But yeah, it was yesterday. So, I mean, I know it's a little belated, but AJ, you're my favorite co host on the show. Oh! And I thought it'd be a good idea to get you this cake. Uh, you're not putting that in my face. I mean, are you? That, that is looks for like you a to real decide. Cake. I'm gonna... That is, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Right. Good. Yeah, it's easy. Great. How about you uh, wrap up the show now while okay. I? Oh, oh, that's amazing. All right. Uh, well, thank you for uh, oh tuning in and lending us your eyeballs. It's gonna get on my shirt now. <laughs> Tomorrow on the show, uh, we've got a super special guest to talk all about the Smash Summit. The one, the only axe. Tune in tomorrow to check that out. You don't want to miss it. Until then, hit the social buttons. See you later.